this has been the family home for, for Berry Club, Football Club for 130 odd years. It's, uh, it's, it's part of the community. It's part of the essence of Berry Town. Berry Football Club has been the defining characteristic of my life for as long as I can remember. There were no half measures about being a Berry fan. I went into it deep, right from the start. As for the community, it's always been here since 1885, so it's as simple as that, and it means such a lot to the community. There can be no doubt where many thousands of the town's citizens are on Saturday afternoon. This is Gig Lane, home of Bury's league football team. Nicknamed the Shakers, they were twice FA Cup holders. Now, after recently having a spell in the third division, they have successfully shaken themselves back into their more familiar place in the second division. The first time I ever came here, was, I was about four or five years of age. I've got vague memories of it. Um, apparently my dad said I was more interested in the pies at the back than the, the, the football. And, and then after half time I cried because the same teams came out. Yeah. When I was about 10 years of age, I would catch the local bus and make my way down to Gig Lane, walk along here, and my father would be expecting me and uh, I'd see his head, his mop of white hair, pop up over the window here, that was here, and he'd wave at me, and uh, then I'd make my way into the ground, and I remember the people at the time, the older people with their flasks and tartan uh, rugs on their knees, um, abiding memories. And, um, of course, little did I know that one day I would become a director here myself. And this is the door we would go through. And um, it was a wonderful time. Berry Football Club is in my blood. Uh, I love it to pieces. I always feel, as a Berry fan, that I got accepted into a secret society when I went to my first game because I just felt people saw me as this, you know, unmoulded lump of clay. They thought, right, we're having him. They often say that uh, football, football fans don't choose their clubs, their clubs choose them. And, you know, the people at Bury made sure that Bury chose me. One of the, the fondest memories was 1994. We'd entered the competition in the Berry Times and the, the winner would get a mascot for a pre-season uh, pre game against uh, Manchester United youth. And I got a call to say we'd won the competition. On the day we, we won 4-0, but Mark Carter's goal, the third goal, was something special. And again, United give it away. We win it back. United lost the ball in midfield. Stanislaw got it. Stanislaw. He passed it out. The ball came in. Mulligan. Spike hit it on the volley. Carter. Keeper had no chance and the crowd were up. It was a great, it was great. It was his hat trick and then it was just the place was in battle. It was fantastic. Carter.
we've always been always been a, a, a small club. We've always struggled financially for a long, long time. We, we went part time at one time, um, and then um, we, we were close to closing down when uh, a gentleman called Stuart Day came in and apparently saved us from the, the bailiffs that day and set out a five-year plan to save the club. And uh, things were, things were going well for a few years, but. Uh, after two or three years, I think it started to um, maybe uh, crowds were finding out little whispers that uh, maybe things weren't as great off the field as we thought, maybe overstretched. It didn't work out. We were, we were relegated, and, and then it all blew up that we found out that, uh, that Mr. Mr. Day was in terrible debts and wanted to sell the club. And then the supposed saviour came in gentleman called Steve Dale and uh, he said the, safe, the club was safe with him, he was going to save it, apparently he bought it for a pound. The last two people that have held the keys have been reckless beyond belief, you know the first chairman Stuart Day who took over in 2013 spent money left right and centre that has plunged the club into debt and since Steve Dale took over it's the club has further been financially mismanaged. We got promoted at Tranmere. Uniquely, we got we, we, our last two, two promotions were at Tranmere away. Uh, they must hate us. And um, no, they were, we knew then that things were difficult because the players weren't getting paid. It's similar to what was happening at Macclesfield only that, and, and Bolton at the time. That Bolton players were on strike. Our players, to their credit, they didn't because they could see that goal of promotion. Uh, even though the club might fold it, of course it would look good for them. And uh, credit to them, but. You know, we had a good team. We had a good team of players who went out there playing 90 minutes. They won promotion and they weren't getting paid. You know, players I still have to pay the mortgages. They're not on mega books at this level. Um, so if the players weren't getting paid then there was no revenue coming in. Where's the money going to come from? So, yeah. Manchester. This is Kids Radio. The clock's ticking for Bolton and Bury this lunchtime, with both clubs facing eviction from the Football League later. They have until five o'clock tonight to sort out takeover deals. Meanwhile, at Gig Lane, it's all hands on deck as hundreds of Bury fans turn out to get the club ready for the weekend. They're optimistic that a deal to save them will go through and are preparing for what could be their first game of the season. People are sweeping up and getting it match ready. Dave Gifford from supporters group Forever Bury is there. There's uh, Accrington fans, Blackpool, Bolton. Leeds, Manchester City, Huddersfield. It's fantastic, it's a football family. I know what the club is and I knew there'd be plenty of Bury fans here. It's just pleasing to see the other fans from other clubs come into us. It's game over and heartbreak for Bury fans this morning as the club is expelled from the English Football League. The Shakers had been given until five o'clock yesterday to complete a deal to sell the club that collapsed 90 minutes before the deadline. It makes them the first team to drop out of the EFL since Maidstone almost 30 years ago. Fans there can't believe what's happened.
Preventing Berry Football Club staying in the English Football League. And the English Football League prevented credible bids being considered through some condition of exclusivity that no one wanted. Steve Dale was brought to the table finally. Anyone here who knows what grief feels like, he's feeling it also today. But there are stages of grief. The denial that we all felt this week is real. But sooner or later, you've got to get out of bed, get dressed and go to the shops. And this is what today is. The recognition that life goes on. We don't walk away. Bury FC doesn't die. We've got to accept. More than likely, we'll be playing football in lower leagues. But we've been there before. We've got to accept that we've got to tell to determine our future. We've been there before as well. So I'm not here to advocate a new club. I'm here to advocate new focus on the continuation of Berry FC, of football at Gig Lane. To the town, I think it's an absolute disaster because, you know, we're a small town, we're a proud town, but we're a small town. And I think clubs like those that are the size of Berry need to be in the 92. They need that national recognition week in, week out. When Berry Football Club do well, the town of Berry feels good about itself. And this decision to expel the club from the EFL and this collapse is going to hang heavy over the town for a few decades yet. This is where I handcuff myself. And people came down and brought fresh drinks and uh, cakes and sandwiches and I couldn't eat a thing. Um, but the people around me gathered and uh, they were supported me in my quest to keep Berry in the news. And it went global. The whole world seemed to want to know about Berry Football Club. But now, of course, with other things on, on the news, we've died a death. And we need that impetus once again to keep us in the news and for somebody out there who will buy the club and continue our long association with the Football League. I'm so upset because it wasn't the chairman's club to do what, what he did with. You know, the club doesn't belong to the chairman, it belongs to the fans. And we're the ones who are suffering for this. You know, we're the ones who, like I say, have to walk around like zombies on Saturday afternoons because this thing that has been part of our life for so long is no longer there. You know, fans do say it's, it's like a bereavement. I, I put it worse than that, it's like a murder in the family. And the reality is you know he's done it but you can't do anything about it. And as Mr Dale said, I never went to Bury, So for me to walk away from Bury and never go back is a very easy thing to do. I don't even know, I didn't even know there was a team called Bury. I'm not a football fan. Well, thank you, Mr Dale, for everything you've done for this club, for the town, for the greater footballing family. I hope you can sleep at night, but I'm sure that you can. It's the 27th of November, we've just arrived down here and found that the electricity has been cut off. <laughs> we knew this was going to come at some stage because the current chairman hasn't been paying any bills and uh, we have been warned. In the 90s, when we got into what is the championship now, it was a tough, tough league. That season was... Eclipsed right at the end, we went down to Queen's Park Rangers for the final day of the season and we went in a minibus, 12 of us, all in fancy dress, um, with a 20 stone handy pandy. Tarzan was driving the bus, there was a chicken, there was a gorilla, there was a mad monk, uh, the mask, we had all sorts. Um, 
and then I don't know too many escapades on that trip it was a good, good fun trip all round and one of the funniest moments was on the way back we, we got the result we won Armstrong scored we stayed up all the other results went really well for us because City got relegated and that that was probably the greatest moment where we we stayed in level 2 and City went down to level 3 for the first time in I don't know how long uh, but again see where they are now um, they can laugh at us now but on the way back from that trip we got a flat tyre on the uh, the M6 um, we were at the side of the motorway changing the tyre all in fancy dress and the team bus came past <laughs> When we got back here, they gave us so much grief, but it was so such good fun. Sadly, the league is starting to fragment, and um, we are the first victims. Uh, I desperately hope no other club goes that way, but it, I, I think there are so many now in trouble that it's inevitable that others will go, and it, it, it might just be like a pack of cards falling down, you know, a of cards. Um, I hope it doesn't get to that. Um, I hope we can resurrect ourselves and get back into some sort of league and get playing again and get competing again and building the memories again. Um, but we'll see. We'll see.